the goal for today's class is to learn about optimizing over convex set or coming up with algorithms that optimizes uh, functions over convex set. So let me recall that we are trying to solve a problem where I want to minimize the function f of x uh, over a convex set. So x in Rn is convex set. So in order for, in, for me to introduce some algorithms for solving this kind of problem, uh, let me recall or let me mention two results or two results, two, let me introduce two concepts. So the first one is projection theorem, okay? So in the previous class, one of your friends suggested that if we are going out of the convex set, let's say we are running gradient descent and we go out of the convex set, then we should project the point that is outside the convex set back into the set. And what he meant was, he wants to find the point Y star, which is arg min of X in or Y in capital X, norm of Y minus X. So this is the projection, which I'm going to denote by X square bracket with a superscript plus. So this is a projection of X. This is two norm square. This is projection of X onto capital X. Okay, so that's what is meant by projecting a point that is outside the set onto that set. Okay, so let me show you a picture. This is a circle. This is the center, let's say it's the origin. And I have a point X. And I want to find the projection of X onto this circle. Which point on the circle do you think is the closest point to X? So that's the point that will solve this minimization problem um, over the sphere. So I shouldn't say circle, I should actually say sphere. So everything is included in the, in the set. Okay, so what's your guess? What is the point that is closest to X and the point should lie in the convex set capital X? Any guesses? Which point would be the closest? The section with the tangent at, uh, at the surface of the sphere. Right, so this particular point. So this is the intersection of this line segment and the uh, circumference of the sphere. And this is the projection of the point onto the set, which is the sphere. And can someone tell me what is, what is the expression for Y star? What should the expression for Y star be? So I think visually it is pretty clear that this is the point, this green point is the one that's closest to X. Now the question is what's the numerical value at that green point? What, what's the expression for Y star? The radius. Radius. That's it? It has to have a direction. It, it can't be a scalar. So Y star is a vector. R is a scalar. Um, is it y transpose x? Y, what is y here? We're looking for y star. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking for y star. Any other guesses? 
Is it x divided by norm of x? Yes, it's x divided by norm of x. So this is the two norm of x. So x divided by two norm of x would, would project it onto the unit circle. And then of course you have to scale the unit circle by r so that this point basically moves to this point. So that's the projection of x onto uh, this sphere of radius r. Now, the next question I have is, is this projection difficult to compute or easy to compute? So, so what I'm asking is in general, uh, for projecting onto a sphere which is centered at the origin, is the projection difficult to compute or easy to compute? So let's, let's think about it. So we are given a vector X. I can readily check whether X is outside the sphere or inside the sphere. Um, and if it is outside the sphere, then I have to compute the norm. Well, I have to compute the norm in order to figure this part out, whether it's inside the set or outside the set. So I've already computed the norm. I just have to divide the, uh, the vector by its norm. And then I have to just multiply it by R. So actually this is a very easy to compute projection. Okay. Let's look at another example, uh, which is based on the problem we did in the previous class. So any question about projection onto the sphere before I proceed to the other projection? No. Okay. So let's say I want to project. Uh, so I have AX equal to zero. So this is example one. This is example two. So X is AX equal to zero. Okay. So it looks like a hyperplane passing through the origin. This is my origin and this is the plane. This uh, hyperplane is basically my set capital X. And I have a vector. Let's say my vector is given by C. This is my vector and I want to project it onto this particular plane. So this would be my projection of C onto this plane. Okay, so what's the optimization problem I need to solve in order to compute the value of this projected point? That'll be, I want to minimize norm of, let's look at it, y minus x square. So c minus x square or y minus c square to norm. Okay, that would be the projection. That is the projection of C onto this hyperplane. So remember, we did a similar problem in the previous class. So if you can look up your notes and tell me what the solution to this problem should be. So remember, I have put an argument here, so I can just put a half. It, it doesn't matter because the point at which the minimum is achieved doesn't change if you multiply it by a positive number. And so this is argument of half y minus c square. What's the y star? Anyone remembers? We did this in the previous class. So let's let's just go back to Oh, this is the example. So minimum of half C plus X square. So we had argued uh, over AX equal to zero and we had argued that this is the optimal solution. X star equals to minus some matrix multiplied by C. So here C has a positive sign, whereas in the other case, we had Y minus C square. So I have to replace C with negative C in the previous expression. So that would be I minus 
A transpose, A A transpose inverse A C. That's the projection onto this hyperplane. The projection of a point C onto this hyperplane. Is this a complicated projection or easy projection? Depends on how big the matrix, matrix A is because right. of the inverse. Right, right. So if matrix A is big, then this is a very complicated projection, right? So you have to multiply matrices, then you have to take an inverse, then you have to do some more computation, then you have to multiply it by a vector. So this could be complex. Okay, depending on the size of A. So as you can see, some projections are easy, some projections are difficult, but nonetheless, projections can be computed uh, in closed form for a large variety of systems. So what projection theorem says, so Y star equals to X plus equals to argument norm of y minus x square, y in capital X, if and only if, y minus y star transpose x minus y star is less than equal to zero for all y in capital X. This is the statement of the projection theorem. So let's go back to the two examples. I still have a question. Yes, of course. Go ahead. Does the position of the plus sign um, uh, make a difference? Uh, where is the plus sign? So which plus sign you are talking about? Yeah, is that one you, you just edited? Oh, this one, this plus sign, this is just a notation of projection. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I didn't pick this notation. This is something that has been used for several years and decades. So that's why I'm just using it. It's just a notation. Okay. All right, so let's look at the two examples. So first example is a circle, oh, sorry, a sphere. Uh, here was my X, this is the origin. This is my Y star, this, this point. And what is X minus Y star? So X minus Y star is this. So this is X minus Y star vector and then Y minus Y star for any Y in the convex set capital X. So let me pick this Y. Then this is Y minus Y star. Do you think that the inner product is going to be less than equal to zero for these two vectors? And if so, why? Okay, so I pick some vector Y in the convex set capital X. So Y minus Y star is this vector. So it starts from Y star and goes all the way to Y with the arrow in this direction. And then you have the second vector, which is X minus Y star. 
which starts at y star and goes all the way to x in the with with arrow in the other in in the direction of x so would the inner product be positive or would the inner product be negative and why the angle between them is more than 90 degrees so negative right. right so the angle between them is more than 90 degrees so this angle is greater than 90 degrees so the inner product has to be negative so remember v transpose v1 transpose v2 norm of v1 this is two norm of v1 two norm of v2 cos theta where theta is the angle between v1 and v2 so in this case the angle is greater than 90 degrees and therefore cos theta is going to be negative these two terms are positive so therefore the inner product is going to be negative when theta is greater than 90 degrees well less than or equal to 0 if theta is greater than or equal to 90 degrees so certainly this this point y star seems to have that property where where y minus y star transpose x minus y star is less than or equal to zero. Therefore, this y star is the projection of x onto this particular sphere. Let's look at the second example, which was the hyperplane example. So this is the hyperplane. This was C. This was C plus. This is some point Y. So let me use Y star here. So C minus Y star would be this. Y minus Y star would be this. Uh, what's the inner product between C minus Y star, C minus Y star and Y minus Y star in this case? zero right so in this case the inner product is always going to be zero no matter which y you pick the inner product will be zero so this also satisfies this condition this condition and therefore y star is indeed the projection of c onto this particular convex set capital x Okay, so we have looked at projection onto two specific sets. Uh, let me give you projection. So any any question so far? Then I'll move on to another example of a projection onto a box set. Any question on the projection theorem? Okay. Another thing to note is Y star is going to be unique. So for every point X, you will have a unique Y star, which is a projection of that point onto the set X. And that's because the objective function is strongly convex function. So therefore it will have a unique minimum and it cannot have two minimums. Okay, so no further questions. So let's look at projection onto box set. So example three. projection on box so the box set is a less than equal to x less than equal to b and so the projection is given by so the, this is the ith element of the projection so let me write it as y i star so this is the ith element of y star and this is given by ai if x is xi is less than ai xi if xi is equal to sorry if ai is less than equal to xi is less than equal to bi and this is pi if xi is greater than bi
Okay, let's look at it in a picture. So this is my box constraint. A1, A2, B1, B2. Well, I don't want to write the coordinates. So these are the box, this is a box. And if I have a point here, X, X1, then this is the projection of X1. If I have a point here, X2, then this is the projection of X2. What's wrong? Okay, there seems to be some technical problem with one note. Okay, cool. Sorry about that. Okay, so X1, it gets projected onto this particular box. Uh, this is in, This entire set is a box. And so if you pick a point outside the set, uh, if it is along one of the edges, then of course the projection will be on the edge. If it is along one of the corners, then the projection will be on the corner. Okay, so that's the pictorial description of what this projection operation is doing. Uh, again, my question would be, is this projection operation complicated, computationally challenging, or is it easy to project onto a box set? What do you think? So is this is this a complicated expression or easy expression? I think it's easy. Easy, though. easy, right? Yeah. It's pretty easy. Easy to compute. So until now, what we have seen is uh, computing projection onto some of the typical convex set is pretty easy uh, in some cases, and it could be difficult in some other case. Um, but projection can be done over convex set. So if your problem is reasonably sized, let's say a 100 dimensional X or, or 50 dimensional X, then your problem, you, the projection operation is somewhat easy to do under all situations. Okay, any, any question on the projection operation? I'm, I'm a little confused for the box set. Yes. So in this case, in the picture you have drawn, uh, the vector A would be like the bottom left corner. That's right. And the vector B would be the top right corner. That's right. This one is correct. So then we're saying that uh, like for X1, when you project it down, mm -hmm. because it's greater than uh, B, right. then so we're saying that it should be, oh, it should be BI. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. It's, just, it's for the particular coordinate. That's right. It's for the particular okay. coordinate. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, this is. Okay. Uh, so that that is the projection theorem. Now, the second thing I wanted to talk about was. Uh, feasible directions. So remember in the unconstrained optimization, so when we, when we were talking about the unconstrained optimization case, all directions were feasible. So if I'm standing at a point X, I could go in either direction. I could take any small step, large step, it doesn't matter. Okay, I'll still be within RN, right? So all directions were feasible. But when you are in a 
constrained environment. So this is your convex at capital X and you're sitting at at a point X, then you can't really move in all directions. So in particular, these directions are not feasible directions because if you move in those directions, you are outside the set. Okay, so we need to define what are the directions in which we can travel. So these are the directions. Let me make it in a different color. So these are the directions in red that are feasible because I can go in those directions, okay? Now again, another infeasible direction is this direction. So in this direction, you can go up to some level, but beyond that, you can't really go because otherwise you will be outside the set. So what would be a good way to um, define the set of feasible directions at S at X? So let me denote it by D of X set of all feasible directions. At X, how should I define the set of all feasible directions at X? Okay, so D in Rn such that X plus D lies in capital X. Now, another way to write it is union of X bar minus X, X bar is in capital X. So if I pick any X bar in the set capital X, so let's say I pick this as my X bar and I draw a line from x bar minus x, so that's this vector. That vector is automatically feasible because, because, the fact, because of the fact that the set is convex and you can take, you can move along this particular direction without really violating the constraint that you should be within the set. Okay. So these, this is one way to define the set of all feasible directions. So let's look at examples. Let's say your set capital X is X greater than equal to zero. Then the set of feasible directions at X is D greater than equal to minus X. Right, so that then X plus D will be greater than equal to zero and therefore um, it will be a feasible point within the set capital X itself. If your X was AX equal to B, what do you think the set of feasible directions would be? It requires a little bit of work. So I want you to do that work and tell me what is the set of feasible directions for this set capital X. Uh, a with B, uh, A with B plus X. Okay, so A, X plus D should be equal to B. Is that what you were saying? Uh, so it's A N with B plus X. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's, let's, so I, this is the correct answer because remember what did I write here? So X plus D should also be in X, which means that AX plus D should be equal to B. Now remember that AX was already equal to B because your X is in the capital set, X is in the set capital X. 
So AX is equal to B. So what I get is AD equal to zero. Okay, so the set of all feasible directions satisfy AD equal to zero. Okay. So these are the ways to figure out what are the set of feasible directions in which you can travel without necessarily going out of the set. So now we have all the tools needed to develop algorithms for optimization over convex set. Okay, so if you have any questions on the set of feasible directions of projection theorem, now is the time to ask. Okay, cool. So let's move on to algorithms. So whenever we want to come up with algorithms, let's let's consider the same set of arguments we made in the um, in the unconstrained optimization case. So I have I want to define an algorithm where x k plus one equals to x k plus alpha k d k. Um, now in this case, my d k cannot be unconstrained, so it has to be the set of feasible directions at x k or in other words, dk should be of the form x bar k minus xk, where x bar k is some point in the set capital X. Okay. And we want dk to be not just a feasible direction, but we want it to be a descent direction. So we want the function value to decrease if we move along dk. Alpha k is the step size, of course, so it can be anything between zero and one. All right, so we want dk to be a descent direction. Okay, so let's do, let's assume that my alpha k is small. So I can use Taylor series to arrive at the following expression. So this is f of x k plus alpha k gradient of fxk transpose dk plus small o of alpha k. So this term is small. So when will this be less than f of xk? So remember we want to be, we want to travel in a direction dk such that f of xk plus one is strictly less than f of xk. Then we are in a descent direction and uh, we can proceed in that particular direction. So when would this be true? When will this inequality be true? What do you think? So this term is small. This term is great. So alpha k is greater than zero. So this term should be less than zero, right? So in other words, dk is a descent direction. If gradient of fxk transpose dk is strictly less than zero. Perfect. And remember, I can write dk as x bar k minus xk. 
So I can equivalently write that gradient of fxk transpose x bar k minus xk is less than zero. What is xk bar here? So xk bar is any any point in the set capital X. Okay. So let me go back to the discussion on feasible directions. Uh, sorry for going back and forth. So remember that any feasible direction D can be written as X bar minus X, where X bar is in the set capital X. Okay. So that's exactly what I'm doing here, where I'm writing DK as X bar K minus XK, where I have to pick X bar K appropriately, or I have to pick DK appropriately. Um, but it should satisfy this particular expression, these, these two expressions. I mean, either of these two expressions. So if I'm picking X bar K, it must satisfy this inequality. And if I'm picking DK, then it must satisfy this inequality. Okay. Now, of course, uh, in, 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 when you are implementing the algorithm, you will pick alpha K according to limited minimization rule or Armijo's rule or constant step size, depending on your preference and algorithmic stability. Now, my question is as follows. Um, how can you pick a DK such that this inequality is satisfied? Let's, let's try to come up with the simplest algorithm where I want to pick a value of DK such that this particular inequality is satisfied. How would I choose DK in that situation? Okay, let me come up with the first, or let me mention the first method, which is called, so algorithm number one, called conditional gradient method or Frank Wolf method. So in this case, I'm going to pick DK to be argmin D in the set of all feasible directions at XK gradient of FXK transpose D. This is equivalent to saying I want to pick my X bar K as argmin X in capital X gradient of FXK transpose X minus XK. Okay, remember this was precisely the case for steepest descent method where we were minimizing the inner product between the gradient of F and D, but the D of XK was actually RN. So therefore you could pick D to be minus negative gradient, minus of gradient FXK. So this is just trying to imitate the gradient method where your feasible direction D of XK 
is is sort of bounded uh, un unlike the case of unconstrained optimization where it could be any vector any question on this conditional gradient method now the question i am going to ask you is is this co condition going to be satisfied so is gradient of fxk transpose dk will it be less than 0 whenever we pick dk according to this fashion assume that you are not at the optimal point Okay, so let me repeat my question. Uh, do you think that this inequality, this inequality would be satisfied by conditional gradient method? Uh, I think at some point it might be zero. At some point it might be zero, but let's say you are not at the optimal point. Then what happens? Will you find a point strictly less than zero? So let's see what happens if you're at the optimal point, okay? So if xk was equal to x star, then we know from the necessary conditions for optimality that f of xk or gradient of f of x star transpose x minus x star is greater than or equal to zero for all x in capital X, right? So this was the necessary condition for optimality, which we studied in the previous class. Okay, so if you're at the optimal point, then of course there is going to be no feasible direction. So if you do the minimization, you will always get a value which is greater than or equal to zero. However, if you are at a non-optimal point, then you will most likely encounter a direction DK where the argument or, or the minimum value of this is negative. And therefore, you will always be in a descent direction when you apply this particular conditional gradient method. Okay. Now, of course, there are, when you are implementing it on a real world problem, then you have to use domain knowledge to, um, to prune the solution so that you are always in the descent direction and not doing zigzagging motion in the convex set, because that could happen um, in this particular algorithm. But more or less, this is uh, the first algorithm for solving constraint optimization problem where the constraint set is convex. Let's look at the second algorithm, which is called gradient projection method. And in the gradient projection method, what you do is, this is your convex set capital X. You are standing at XK. This is negative gradient or XK minus SK. SK is the step size. So XK minus SK gradient of FXK. And now that this point is outside the set, you will project it back onto the set and that will be your X bar K. So in this case, your X bar K is X K minus S K gradient of F X K plus where S K is a step size. And then you will implement xk plus one equals to xk plus alpha 
alpha k x bar k minus x k. Okay, so this is the descent direction here. X bar k minus x k. Now you will ask me a question that while we know how alpha k needs to be chosen, so it could be limited minimization rule or it could be constant step size or Armijo's rule, it's not quite clear how you would pick SK here. So let me give you a few methods for picking a SK, which is the step size. So SK could be a constant step size. It could be diminishing step size. And there is another way of picking the step size, which is Armijo's rule. Armijo's rule along the projection arc. Okay, so in order to introduce Armijo's rule along the projection arc, I need to introduce a notation xk of s, which is xk minus s Okay, so the way to apply Armijo's rule here is you want to pick S K equal to S beta raised to M K such that so smallest value of M which is equal to M K such that f of xk minus f of xk s bar beta raised to m is greater than or equal to sigma gradient of fxk transpose or MK is the so SK is equal to S bar beta raised to MK, where MK is the smallest integer that satisfies this smallest integer M that satisfies this particular inequality. Of course, if your function evaluation is complicated because your state 
because your function involves a lot of complicated expressions, you are better off using constant step size. But if the function evaluation is not a problem, then you can use Armijo's rule to compute an appropriate value of SK and implement this particular algorithm. You can pick alpha K equals to one in this case. Okay, so this is the second method, which is gradient projection method. So what you do in the gradient projection method is you pick a, you take a gradient step according to the step size SK, and then you project the solution back onto the set capital X, you get X bar K, and then you take a step along that direction. So XK plus one is XK plus alpha K X bar K minus XK. So your new point will be somewhere along this line. We will be somewhere here. That will be your XK plus one. And that's what gradient projection method does. Any question on the gradient projection method? Okay. Can everyone hear me? I hope. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, for a lo long time, nobody said anything. So I'm kind of wondering whether uh, people are here or, or I'm just talking to myself. Okay. So this is the gradient. So let's look at the conditional gradient method. So in the conditional gradient method, we, we, pose the original problem as another minimization problem where I have to solve this argument of gradient of fxk transpose x minus xk. Now, arguably in some situations, this problem, it's a linear programming problem, could be easy to solve. In some situations, it may be difficult to solve. So therefore, you need an alternate way to compute x bar k. So this gives you an alternate way to compute x bar k where you can pick xk x bar k according to this fashion, but then you have to do a projection. So depending on whether this argument is easy to do or this projection is easy to do, you can pick one of these two methods. However, there is something else that I want to point out is that this gradient projection method is equivalent to um, another way of, so there is another way of viewing this x bar k, which is what I want to get at now. So, Let's think about it. So your X bar K is given by X K minus S K gradient of F X K uh, projected. So this is argument X in capital X, X minus xk minus sk gradient of fxk two square. Okay, so this is the usual projection. Uh, I'm writing this projection operation as a minimization problem. And this is equivalent to, after you, you do some massaging, this is equivalent to argument x in capital X gradient of fxk transpose x minus xk plus one over two sk x minus xk square. This is again two norm. Okay, so this way of picking x bar k is the same as 
you're picking x bar k according to this particular optimization rule okay so this i just want to contrast this with i, I know i'm over time but i just want to contrast this with conditional gradient method where your x bar k was argmin x in capital x gradient of fxk transpose x minus xk so what's the difference between the two way of picking x bar k So yes, so you have basically convexified by adding this squared norm term uh, with some step size SK. Uh, you have convexified the objective function and then you are taking a minimization over X. Okay, so that's, that's the essential difference between conditional gradient method and gradient projection method. So even though you have a projection operation here, uh, once you do some massaging of the projection operation, you will see that essentially you are trying to convexify the objective function um, by adding a squared norm term uh, in the conditional gradient method. Okay, so that's the difference. Uh, one of the major difference between conditional gradient method and gradient projection method. So with that, I end my class. In the next class, I'm going to talk about Manifold suboptimization method, which is also known as simplex method for optimization, and uh, uh, we'll be talking about it on Wednesday, uh, on Friday. And another note is that I'll send you an email, but uh, I probably will plan on starting the Friday's class on at 2 p.m. instead of 1:50 p.m. because there's another important meeting that I have to attend. So I'll send out an email announcement after the class. Um, that uh, on Friday, the class will start at 2 p.m., not at 1.50 p.m. So thank you all. I'm gonna be around if you have any questions, uh, but those of you who want to uh, go to some other class or whatever, if you wanna leave, you can leave now. But uh, for others, if you have any questions, just let me know now. I had a question about the project topic. Oh, um, do you want to talk it talk about it now, or do you want to talk about it in a? Uh, well, the question has two parts. I can also talk about it later, but the main part I want to know was how in depth do you want us to go with our project topic? Oh, just a couple of paragraphs. So you're going to write about what's the problem, what's the optimization problem, and the real world application of that optimization, and uh, the what references you may be reading for completing the project and whether you are going to implement an algorithm or whether you are going to do a survey of a couple of papers or three papers. Um, that's all you need to write, just a couple of paragraphs, nothing more, nothing less. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, office, there's, is there office hours to that? Uh, there are no, there, there was a TA office hours, uh, uh, but if you have a project question, you probably want to talk to me. So uh, why don't you send me an email and I'll send you a Zoom link to talk right after the class is over. So then we can have a more one-on-one -on -one discussion about the project topic. No problem, I'll do that, thank you. Yeah. Any other question on today's class, homework, assignment? Perfect. Uh, we'll see you guys on uh, Friday.